Hello, and welcome to the Big Money Stylist Podcast, episode number 77. Woo! We're like three quarters of the way to 100, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, that's commitment. We fucking did that's it. That's consistency, <laughs> and I will say we're still ranking in the top out of all the podcasts with uh, the Warrior Empire <laughs> and DKW and BMS, so... Yeah. Not that we like want to rub it in. Not that we're bragging, but we are. But if we were to be bragging, (laughs) we'd be bragging. (laughs) So tomorrow starts our mastermind event. Yes, I know. I'm so geeked. You know what? That so AV Irvine, this is the first year we've done that there. And I've been really impressed. Like it's like super bougie. It's so I like that there's a ton of space. There's all the cameras, the lights that we need. Like it's I think I'm so used to not like me setting it up because I don't set up shit. But it's so crazy. Like the normal hair class and like not to knock on anybody, but like I've been to a few hair classes where I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like literally like somebody sitting on my. It's so crammed in there. It's the worst. You can't see anything. You're so you literally they put like 50 to 100 chairs in like a regular size salon. You're like, what? Oh, yeah. Uh, like a 10 person salon, you know, or the worst is when you have like a column or like a pole in front of you. You're like, I literally can't yeah. see or you, when they have like a stage, but it like curves and you're right. in that weird curve. Ah, oh, yeah, I've been clearly a at few. that point. It's just like, hey, it's it's all about who's who's <clears throat> and say you went to so and so's class like. It's like you, you didn't even get, see anything. You can't get a lot of value out of that. And the other thing that's crazy, I mean, I, I know most hair classes I'd say are like, what? Like, what's it going right? 1500 bucks nowadays? There's no way. But still. I like, feel like it's way less. Is it? Okay. I don't know. But I'm saying some of the yeah. top hair classes are like 1500 Yeah, I'm I like, would say that. I'm sorry, but the, to go to pay $1,500 and sit where you're that crammed in is so ridiculous. It, I would like to at least see what I'm doing. And yeah. I think that's why we've always had so many like cameras and TVs yeah. just so people could actually yeah. see what we're and it's doing. Only, like, I, I don't know if it's just our, the, like the hair industry, but like if you're going to put on a class or an event, like don't, don't be a cheap asshole about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's funny, actually, one of our trainers called me and she's moving salons and opening up a much, 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 much bigger salon. Oh, wow. And it already has like rooms built out. And that's why... So that's why we had a conversation and she was like, what's my role in BMS coming in the future? She's like, I know we talked about it, but I just want like clarity. And I was like, and I just literally started laughing and I was like, I just had a conversation with the team member about sending you like more equipment to like get things rolling. So yep. Oh, Oh, we're so excited. So, so many things are happening. So going forward though. So obviously last time we were here, I told you guys, if you have any salon stories, stories. I'm really digging the stories. (laughs) I think they're funny. If you have any crazy, funny, what the fuck, even inspirational stories you want to share with us about the salon life, your career, anything like that, send them to Ani, A-N-I, at hairextensionsecret.com. And Danielle and I will be reading them live. live. Ha ha. Well, Well, I guess not live. (laughs) But we're reading them. We're doing it live, but not live at all. So I have a story here today and I'm just going to begin with it. And it says, so I used to work at a really busy salon on a college campus. The salon was very small, so small, in fact, that if you weren't careful, you would hit your head on the wall while trying to wipe your ass. As a tribute to this, there was always a color stain on the wall from someone hitting their head with color on their hair. One time a graduate. No, that's bad. (laughs) Not great. I'm five foot one. If I hit my head on anything, it's made for midgets. So one time a graduate student brought in her mother and her 98 year old grandmother, all three got haircuts and checked out. And at the very last moment, granny decided that she needed to use the restroom before she left. Now a little while had passed and I went to use the restroom as she was coming out. She gave me this crazy ass look and walked past me. It was enough of a strange interaction for me to pause and think, well, that was fucking weird. I continued in shut the door, flipped on the light, and there it was. A giant pile of poop on the floor in front of the toilet. To add insult to injury, she stepped in it and tracked it all the way out of the salon. It's not even like stepping in dog shit. She's like, I stepped in my own shit. (laughs) I stepped in human shit. I walked out of the restroom into the break room where some of the other girls were, were. And she said, uh, guys, we have a problem. So after telling them all, I said, so we're going to rock, paper, scissors to clean this up, or are we going to have to call hazmat? So after a rousing game of not it, the only mom of the group says, oh, for God's sakes, and takes one one for the team and cleans it up. 
later that afternoon, we were all talking about it with one of our clients having a good laugh because what can you do at that point other than laugh? And at the end, that same mom said, you guys, that might be you one day. I said, listen, Becky, if I get to a point in my life where I'm shitting on the floor in the hair salon, my better out. days are behind me. <laughs> so that is the story of the shittiest mind fuck that happened to me oh, in the geez, salon. That is bad. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> You know what, though? I think when we first start doing hair, our standard Aww. of where we work is maybe, like, kind of low. <laughs> I don't know. Like, the this, this funny stories always start out in, like, the beginning of your career. You know what I mean? You want to hear something? Yes. Something like this happened in a salon I used to work at. What? The very, very, very first salon I worked at, like, in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, There was just a super old, old, old grandma, and I guess she couldn't hold it. And I don't know if she, like, wasn't wearing underwear. But you put Depends on. I... But here's my thing. She was like walking to the bathroom and there was like oh. poop falling out. So I'm like, were you not wearing underwear? No. Because that's a concern. Just, maybe it just slipped right out. <laughs> and this is not to make fun of old people, but just a situation you know that what? you're literally like, what I, the this, fuck? This is not something to do with hair, but like my somebody I know was golfing and she's older and she was oh, golfing no. with her golfing older buddy women <laughs> and they looked over and a tampon fell out on the green <gasps> no let's just say like things maybe loosen up when you get older but they weren't that old so i can only imagine if you're 98 you're like oh there's a turd on the floor like what? <laughs> oh no that's i'm gonna like when i get older i'm gonna be like stitch everything real real tight <laughs> you know this is your last baby just have yeah. a talk with the doctor <laughs> after you give birth like, listen sit put in an extra stitch for me come on <laughs> That's bad. That's, Holy that's pretty bad. Shit. Shit, shitty, shitty on the floor. I don't know where, what this podcast is about anymore. But I don't that either. Is... I'm like, that, that tops it. Thank well, you for joining us. And thanks we'll... for joining us for seven minutes about poop. <laughs> so oh, awesome. But you know what? It just goes to show like it happens. But that bring, <laughs> reminds me that tons of people, in case you don't know what I look like, I'm heavily tattooed. Like I have a ton of tattoos almost she has a full a face sleeve. tattoo, guys. Goes right up her neck. <laughs> <laughs> I just choked. Just kidding. <laughs> I do not have a I face tattoo. I don't think tattoo. of you as heavily tattooed, but... I think for a woman, I am. Because my left arm is almost a full sleeve. I have a yeah. huge one on my right arm and a oh. couple scattered ones I around. I notice them, I guess. Yeah, I I don't either. But <laughs> I have so many people that look at me and they're like, so, what are you going to do when you're old? I'm like, be grateful I'm alive, honestly. <laughs> what are you going to do when you're old? I don't know. It's What permanent. are you going to do when you're old? Oh, you mean with the tattoos? <laughs> yeah, fuck you. How about that? Yeah, but oh my God, people never let that go. So, oh, that's funny. Thank you for joining us. Story time here. I have no tattoos. <laughs> You're going to get one. I got my belly button pierced that I have a cute little scar from, but... <laughs> Same. I don't I don't really care. Like, I, it's not like I'm against tattoos. I just am like... I don't really care. No, we talked about it last week. After baby Isla's born oh. and you're all good to go, you're getting that one. What What one? Remember the one we talked about with Garrett? The mm -hmm. one. Oh, the ring one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I can't commit to that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you three I, children. Yeah, I, I, we can be married, but I will not commit to that I tattoo. Can, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> My husband keeps losing his wedding ring and he's like, I'm going to tattoo a ring on me. And I was like, I don't really care if you wear a ring or not, but if you want to tattoo your ring, that's great. And then Ani's like, you should get one with him. And I was like, I'm not that committed. <laughs> not to him, but to be getting a tattoo, a ring tattoo. I just... Garrett, please yeah. don't listen to the podcast. Danielle's <laughs> fully committed, I promise you. <laughs> okay, what's um, today's topic? Today's <laughs> topic brings me back to when I was little. Oh. And, you know, growing up, you have your group of friends, and uh, I swear, oh my God, we just had this conversation with your fucking kid, with Ben. Really, yeah. that who you surround yourself yeah, with it's a true story truly does dictate what kind of person you are and and what direction you go yes and inside of business like it dictates whether you're going to grow and yeah. progress and push through the ceiling and become yep. someone new or yep. regress right. and either get will just get worse yeah or just never move like a hundred percent and it's so funny because I was literally telling this to Danielle, 12 year old. <laughs> and I was like, Bailey, because Danielle was saying things about like the girl she hangs out with. And I was like, yeah. don't hang out with those fucking, yeah. I won't call 12 year olds losers, but no. inappropriate but little you girls. Know, like I remember being younger and like I had some shady <coughs> friends like in junior high and I think yeah. my mom kind of knew and she's like, you can't hang out with them anymore. And I'm thinking like, how does she know? But literally like I ended up changing groups of friends. Cause like there was a few situations where I was like, Ooh, I don't want to like get into that kind of stuff. Like, uh, I was yeah. like, no, like that's crossing the line. And I ended up going, hanging out with new friends, like in like ninth grade. And I swear to God, the old friends that I had, they ended up like having sex and doing drugs and dropping out of high school. And like, it literally could like 
change the whole future. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you want to know what's so crazy? And this might just be a testament to how hard-headed and or stubborn I am. Probably junior, senior high, all like the group that I hung out with, they had like just graduated huge into drugs. Like mm -hmm. quite a few of them ended up being heroin addicts and like went to jail, but like they were massive partiers, crushing pills, all this kind of shit. I never did any of it. That scares me. Like it gets too, when it gets too far, I'm like, no. Oh yeah. No. But I have been around, I'm, I will say I've never seen anyone shoot up anything. Like that's, that's my limit, yeah. but I've seen them do a lot of other crazy shit. Right. I never once participated. Like I never even smoked pot, honestly, until I moved to California. Oh. It's legal here. It's fun. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's totally fine. But yeah, let's really talk about even. I think I just got a piece of glass in my I know, hand from I'm my like, phone. What in the world? I dropped my phone on, again. I just got a new screen and shattered it. Oh. It ripped a hole in my leggings. I scratched up the seat it's of my car. Again. I know. I put this on three days ago. The next day I broke it. That's fine. But that's fine. So there is glass in my hand. They Don't make, worry about they it. They make covers <clears throat> for that. You know that, right? That is a cover. No, you need a case and a cover. Oh, I'm sorry. No, thank you. Okay. It makes the phone too big. Well, then keep cutting your hand. It's only a little bit of glass. She's, you're just a little stubborn. <laughs> the shocker, right? You know what's so funny is you and my daughter are both Aquarius, right? She's her birthday's the day before mine. Yeah, and so I, it's so funny because I'll be like dealing with Bailey, and I think like, what would Ani do? How should I enter? <laughs> should I ask Ani for coaching on this? <laughs> like, I literally like. It's so funny because like I don't know if it's like your personality, but you are you are a little bit stubborn. But then oh yeah. But then you have like this, like you have two different sides. You're like Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> Which side are you going to get? You never know. <laughs> you never know. You know, the day after I talked to Bailey, the next day she was actually my gratitude stack. Oh. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is I think you nugget. calmed her down a little bit. It's Did good. I? Yeah. I hope. I was like, I talking to her, I'm like, oh, I get this kid. Like, I yeah. get you. I know. So, but let's, but really though, okay. like even like think about in business and I can speak for myself, like having worked, I've worked in a few different salons. I've even right. worked by myself. And I remember, and I feel like I've been having these like, oh my God, look where I came from moments. Right. Not like, ew, but like, look where I started yeah. off. And even I was just pulling up the photos of like my first ever right. NBR client when I was solo and alone. And even the work that I was doing, like right before I came to DKW versus now a year and a half later, right. vast difference. I think I, I've worked in a studio salon suite, whatever <clears throat> also. Yeah. And it was great. And it was a great starting point for like doing my own thing. But I will agree, like when you have, when you're isolated in a bubble, oh. you just, there's only so much you're open to seeing. You know what I mean? Like you can't. And you're by yeah. yourself. Yeah, it's, there's, a, it's harder to grow, I would say. Yes. Not only is there no one to give you feedback, which we've talked about 10,000 times yeah. in the importance of feedback and like learning to accept it and not being like, an right. egotistical dick about everything. Right. But along with you don't really get inspiration from anybody else. Right. You're alone. I think I'm I think I'm better at hair owning a salon and working with people. Do you For know what sure. I mean? Yeah. Because I hold I like I hold myself to a high standard and then I expect results out of them. And it's like everybody can kind of grow together. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a thousand. So even percent. if you're the owner of a salon, like I would want you to consider that like working with other people, training other people, like I think it has upped my game because I like I'm like I refuse because I feel like I'm setting an example. I refuse to let certain things slide. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, yeah, this is where we this is the goal. This is the target, like whatever it is. Well, and then I feel that because you're surrounded by other people and hopefully other like minded people, because I will say when I started doing NBR, not only was I in a suite yeah. alone, but then I was getting ragged on left and right because yeah. everybody was like, just teach me, show me. She'll never know. And I'm like, like no. your morals and integrity are garbage and yeah. I won't be doing that. But <clears throat> whatever. But even being inside of a salon, it's like perfect example, DKW. Last week I was doing um, another artist client and the client just kept saying, I just want to be bright. I just want pops. I just want pops. I'm like, great. So I went through her blonde was so beautiful. And she was like, ah, I, she's like, I love it, but I don't love it. And I was like, okay, not a big deal. Like, what is it you don't like? Turns out she really wanted like balayage. She didn't want to be completely blonde. Yeah. So then I actually ended up sitting there talking with, it was Amanda. And I was like, okay, let's talk formulations for a minute and just bouncing back and forth. Like it was amazing to have that. And then I learned something. Amanda learned something sometimes like clients don't really know what they want and they no. only know verbiage they've heard other people use. So they throw terms around like balayage or 
I want pops or I want to be smudged. Oh, and then I joking. they're like, I hate roots. And you're like, you just told me you wanted a smudge. <laughs> oh, I jokingly told this client, I'm like, your name's not Stacy anymore. It's your name is pop because that she's just like, you know, look. And then she would go, look how it pops now. Look at it pop. Isn't that That's funny? <laughs> and sometimes when they say pops, you literally could do like the money piece a little bolder and they're like, yeah, like that. And Nailed like, it. I love so it. So you wanted more blonde around your face. So that's why it's so important to have like communication with the client, but also like be open-minded enough. It's good that at least she, she said like, hey, I love it, but I don't love it. Do you know well, what I mean? And cause I had told her, cause we had talked a lot about like her hair history and like what had okay. been going on. And I straight up told her, I said, look, I'm sure you can tell by talking to me within five minutes. I'm so incredibly hard to offend. I'm like, I do not yeah, want like, you. Just tell me. Yeah, I'm like, I will not have you leaving the salon being like, yeah. eh, it's okay. Yeah. I go, so honestly, I'm like, if there's something you want to jig, change, adjust, I'm like, tell me here now. Yeah. And I got like, I have all the time for you. I it's not a problem. I think there's like a fine line of putting like something, like something in the client's head, like, do do you like this piece? Like you don't want to put something in their head, but if you can feel weird energy where you can, you're like, I don't know, are they? You know, you know when you're blown oh, it out and they're yeah. over, they're trying to peek in the mirror and they're looking already. They keep touching and they touching and touching and touching. And and you're like, you're like, that's usually when I'll address them and say, you know what? I think we should before, like I even ask them, I'm like, you know what? I think this piece could be brighter, don't you think? And they're like, oh, I was just thinking that. I'm like, I know you were looking in the mirror, touching your bang seventy five times. You just I'm told me. Aware, <laughs> yeah. don't worry. But it's good to have like the frame control and being like, hey, what, like, do you like it? I think I think we should do this. What do you think? And then they're like, oh yeah. There have been times where I'm like, you know what? I'm just not fully happy with this piece. I'll be right back. I'm yeah. gonna mix up some more color. Yes. And I've never had a client upset about it. They're no. like, wow, thank you. I think they love like the the attention to detail. You know what I mean? For sure. Even if they don't notice it or they're, they're they're like, oh, I think it's fine. You're like, fine's not good enough. And I know I'll feel better about it if I just go in. I one time called the client. I kid you not. <laughs> it was a color correction. We were there forever. It was good considering like how she came in. Like her hair was like straight up Kelly Clarkson, like bleached out, Aww. like dark underneath. Like it was bad. And she wanted to be like bronzed. And I mean, it was good, but her roots were a little warm. And I could, and I didn't say anything because she had already been there for like six hours because it mm -hmm. was good. And then literally two days later, I was like, I can't handle it. And I was like, I personally called her and I was like, hi, I did your hair and I want your roots to be darker. Can you come in? <laughs> <laughs> did she come back yeah, in? Yeah, she was like, oh my God. She's like, I actually loved it. And I know sometimes like a color correction's a work in progress, but like I appreciate, yeah, I'd love to come back in. She's cool. like, I was willing to wait, but yeah, I'd love to come back in. She came back in. She had her cute little dog. I like re-smudged her roots. But that's like the, like, that's the kind of, I don't know. I like to, I take a lot of pride in my work. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like if I don't say something as a professional, like I don't feel like I'm doing my job. So I should have had her just, I should have just stayed later and been like, can I smudge this darker? But we'd already, I was more worried. Like, oh my God, she's been here for so long. Right, for you know? sure. Well, and that's the thing, though, that being inside of a salon, and I can even speak onto this as BMS, obviously, because we do hold a very high standard. And I've actually had so many of the artists in that are attending BMS Con 4 message me and they're like, I love the accountability inside of Mastermind. Yeah. Like, how do I get in? And that's a really big thing because... Right. I've noticed that it's very, very hard for anyone to really hold themselves accountable a hundred percent of right. the time. But then here's what happens. Artists will be like, oh, I wish I had a team. I wish someone held me accountable. Then they yeah. come onto the team yeah. and we hold them accountable. And they don't like it. And then they don't like yeah. it. That's hard. Yes. I, and it comes back to feedback, which we've talked about so many times. Anybody, so I feel like we don't have anybody to. Anybody who's not open to feedback in my salon, they no longer work for me. Like, and, and, and it's not honestly, even like a one-time thing. If it's like a constant battle of like six months that I'm just like, ah, oh, you're stop defending your position. Be open to feedback. Like you have to be, you know what I mean? Like yes. we can all learn and grow together, but with the, if there's too much resistance, I get to this point where I'm like, I love you. You go do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. I've had things in the past that have ended ugly and not well. And I've taken accountability in that. And then I've yeah. had things that have ended medium you know what I mean for and, sure and it's just kind of how it is but if like you if I'm I feel like DKW is really like the education my more my passion is more in education like I think of us I as you. an education company like for sure I don't I don't desire to run a 30 person <clears throat> chair salon oh, I just sweet don't baby Jesus I no. just don't I think there's more <laughs> money in education and more more fulfillment for me like I like I don't know I like education way better so for me like when somebody's not open to feedback in my salon I'm like we're an education company bye-bye you know, and you're com like commission based, you know? Well, and here's so. the deal. Let it be known. It, we don't expect perfection, right? Like that's never what we're looking for. Even me. Oh my gosh. Perfect example. Cause I'm like, oh, I'll throw myself under the bus. I don't care. Fuck. I got a new camera. Right. And this was like months ago. And I was like, I'm nailing these pictures. Cause I got a new camera. <laughs> no, all of a sudden they were blurrier than they, like, I feel like they were okay for a minute. And then they were you blurrier. Have camera issues. Hey, I'm good now though. 
I know, because, because they were blurry. yeah then they were blurry and then i was like i swear to god they look too warm and then i'm like i don't know because we even like we had a photographer come into the salon she worked with us on our cameras i adjusted some of the settings and then danielle was like honey your pictures are coming out really warm I'm like yeah i know because well, i knew the formula you used and i was like that th- this other person used the same formula but look at the difference side by side well i finally noticed it through the backdrop i'm like why does my backdrop look so fucking yeah, warm sometimes it, all the time yeah, it looks brown or blue Yes. And then so you and I had kind of gone back and forth and I'm like, dude, I literally don't know what it could be. I finally checked my white balance and I did what that fucking photographer said. And it was like some weird thing that never should have been whatever. So I finally got it back to normal. But that between me and you was not like a, it was never a battle. It was just like constant back and forth of like, I don't know what could it be, but I always heard you and listened. Do you know what I mean? Right. And I think that's a difference that people need to understand. You can hear someone but not listen to what they are saying. And if you're not willing to listen, you're fucked. And I think it's interesting. So even like with the people inside of Mastermind now, because we had some at the beginning of the year that they were like, hey, I just want out. And we're like, not a big deal. Like, we still love you. You're amazing. Like, best of luck. And they've actually come back and been like, I lost a ton of money. I stopped doing all my marketing because I was like, fuck it, coach, somebody to be accountable to coach. Annie can't yell at me anymore, but that's what it is. It's hard to hear feedback. It's hard to not feel like the best or whatever. Yeah. 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 People will feel attacked. They'll feel insulted. They'll feel whatever. And then it's such a fucking ego thing where it's like, how dare you tell me about my work? I would say that happens a lot. I know you're not married, Annie, but that happens a lot in marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you have a boyfriend, but you maybe you're, you still are in the sweet spot. (laughs) Hopefully at least. Yeah. I don't know. No, but like I, yeah. when you're married, it's funny because like I'll try to give Garrett feedback on things, but I come across like he was doing, he did an event last week. He's like, my wife comes straight after the balls. Cause I think you lose the filter <laughs> when you're that close to him. You know what I mean? And I'll be like, what the fuck are you doing? Da, 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 da. And I'll like think I'm giving him feedback, but I come across like very at, right at the jugular. Yep. But it's so funny because <laughs> even if I try to come across now nice, it's so hard. Like, cause we're in a relationship together. And so it's again, like, okay, what do I want? Like, ultimately like you your ego it's natural for your ego to be like triggered and offended Mm -hmm. and i i had a hard time too when garrett would give me feedback or business advice i'd be like fuck you you're not a hairdresser Mm -hmm. and then i had to be like okay danielle like and i tell i've shared this on a ton of other podcasts i always have to ask myself like okay what is the desired outcome okay the desired outcome is to produce more in business the desired outcome is to help more people the desired outcome is and then i'm like all right i might have to reel in my ego a little bit And I don't want to say submit, but just kind of find a balance where you're like, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then move to that point and get and allow. And I think everybody can get there, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're in like a group together, like whatever it is, you have to ask yourself, like, what did I sign up for? I had a girl recently in our mastermind. I was like, Hey, can I give you feedback? Like that's, we, we always ask like, cause instead of just being like, Hey, do this, this, and this, we, even though they signed up for education, we have to say, are you open to feedback? And I gave her some pointers on some photos and things like that. And she was just like, oh, my God, thank you. You know, and so I think we have to remind ourselves if you're signing up for education, you're kind of you're signing up for feedback, you know, and you have to be open. And that's honestly even a part of being a team. Yeah. Like you have to be okay with being a team. And I've said this a thousand times, like the minute you think you're the best the minute you think that you have nothing left to learn look let's be real if you're that asshole who's sitting inside of a salon right now whether you own it or not and you're like oh I'm keeping this alive I'm doing this I'm the best you're a fucking asshole and I guarantee you that someone in your salon someone in your business is better at you doing something and you just have your head so far up your own ass that you're not willing to hear anything from anybody else well and I like that you just said like it's a team like yes I I get that I created the system I built the brand whatever but I can't do it alone do you know what I mean for sure and it's there's there's such this this balance in the salon life where like I feel like I can educate people and I can also ask my team members for feedback hey what would you formulate what do you think you know what I mean and yes there's no judgment of feeling like Well, let me help you, honey. Like I've been doing hair for this long. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't care. I've been doing hair for like, I don't know, well, like 17 years now. <laughs> I like, love the quick math. You're I'm like, like how old I, I? I the one, carry the one. Yeah. <laughs> but I still, like, I'll ask some of my assistants that maybe been doing hair for like six, seven years. I'm like, hey, what do you think? You know what I mean? There's And there's this, this energy of nobody has like a big ego. It's just like, but the minute I feel that ego, I'm like, I 
like no like no bye-bye see you later you know and not only that then you when you have a team that's so willing to support you and help you you have to realize and this is what something that I've told my artists a thousand times my job is not to tell you what you want to hear I am not here as a trainer to blow smoke up your fucking ass every day and tell you oh my gosh that's so great and then walk away learn you will never grow that way that's not how it works so being a part of a team and I always say it's like the bms family and the tribe and dkw like part of this and being here inside of the culture that we have created is wanting to level up being able to hear like hey this looks great but jig and adjust this part or add one more weft of hair or hey do you see this one little piece of hair if you cut this it's gonna look a thousand times better that's what this is about and the minute that you can't accept that and it's fine like here's the i tell everybody if you don't want to be here don't it's totally fine and if you don't want to be in whatever business you're in that's okay too go but i'm going to have you go and consider are you actually better off leaving right and are you leaving because you're truly like hey my time is up it's been amazing thank you or you're like fuck you i'm the best i'm gonna go do my own stuff because i'm so good and you know what in in a relationship there's times where it's like both both some are long term, some are short term, and it's yes. better for both parties, and that's that's great. But how I measure result or how I base um not success, how I measure growth is by results. Yes. Like it's and I've seen it in myself. Like if your work is not progressively getting better, if your business is not progressively getting better, guess what? Then you're not growing. So like you have to ask yourself even too, like if you're in some kind of education program, how open to feedback are you? Can you look at your your results that you're having numbers wise and like like just looking at your photos and say, oh my God, I'm so proud. I'm seeing improvement in not only my work, but also my income. Mm-hmm. And if you're not, it's not like you have to ask yourself, maybe I'm not being as open to feedback as I could be. You can't be like, oh, the, the program is fucking broken. Because like just like in a relationship, two people have to be willing to do the work. Yes. And we can only do so much if somebody doesn't come across the other way. And as a trainer, that's super frustrating for me is when I'm like, I give somebody advice and I tell them, here's what I'd recommend. And then I see no progress. And I'm like, I can't, I can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm like, for me, I'm like, don't be in a program. Don't pay for the tool or the system. If you're not willing, not even just to do the work, if you're not willing to learn Do you know what I mean? Like it just comes down to learning. And that's really why, like I said, between DKW and BMS and like the tribe that we've built, everyone who's inside of BMS, going back to what we originally said this was about is like who you surround yourself with. Everybody wants to grow. Everybody wants to progress. Everybody wants to be better. Right. And because of that, everybody does keep growing. Some go way faster than others. Some are a little bit slower, but the point is everybody moves forward and that's what we're always looking for. Right. So sometimes when people, they're like, I got it. I'm the best and they jump off the train all of a sudden and then you can literally see them slow down or their work all of a sudden you're like what the hell happened to your work it used to be beautiful and now that looks insane because they're not even being held to the same standard anymore right well and I would say too and I talked to you about this earlier I was like it's so crazy because inside of my salon like I supply all the assistants unlimited color unlimited hair like I have a full-time receptionist like I, I mean there you literally can come in do your hair and leave. Not only that, that's literally what we do. We do the consultations. We collect the deposits. Like I want my artists to be able to just like be happy. And I schedule more than enough time. Like, like you're never like, Oh my God, my next one's here. Like we are not a factory of clients. No, No. I try to create an experience that I would prefer to go to as myself. And Mm -hmm. I feel like I have pretty high standards with just like the experience in general. For sure. And so it's so funny, like when you don't allow your like self, all these like little things, like your work can kind of go to the shitter. (laughs) For sure. Do you know what I mean? Because then at that point, you have to understand you're just pumping yourself up, which is great. Yeah. You need to be able to jack yourself up. But if you've always just been, if you've been patting yourself on the back for the past year, six months, and you've been like, I'm so good. I got yeah. this. Everyone can level up no matter what level you're currently at. Right. And let me also say, if you're one of these artists that you're like, damn it, I want more and I'm so unsupported, you might need to leave. Because I know some people in currently right now inside of BMS Con 4 are facing this, even Mastermind, they're like, I want more. I've painted the vision. Mm-hmm. Like they can see the money they yeah. can make and they're still not supporting me. Right. Now I'm going to have you consider those aren't the same people with the, those are not the people with the same vision 
Right. It's time for you to find and like your fine. own group. Yeah. yeah. No harm, no foul, and no love lost. Everybody has like their their own path to growth. So the only yeah. thing, and I know we're kind of coming up to an end on the show, but the only thing I would encourage like artists out there is you have to measure your success based on your results period Mm -hmm. and if you feel like you can you're like not increase if you truly look at your numbers and you're like shit I actually went down last year Mm -hmm. like I thought I was making more I went off and did my own thing and I was like oh look at these numbers but you don't include your expenses your taxes everything else and you're like shit I took like a real hard cut this year and Mm -hmm. you know what my work maybe isn't as good as I wanted it to be or whatever it is like you have to be able to look at that and be like okay great this is where I'm at, but how can I improve? And maybe you'll have a little more respect and appreciation for where you're at and what you need to do. Yep. So, a thousand percent. Anyway. So just take a look. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because I know myself, whether it be Danielle, whether it be Garrett or Jeff, anyone at DKW Hell, even the artists at BMS, I always look at them and I'm like, I need to be better for them all the time. Yeah. Everyone around me is constantly pushing me to grow to be more, do more, not like I don't work enough, but just hit the next level. Well, you're held to like a high standard now because you're like, Fuck yeah. you're like a trainer. So I think, yeah. I think that puts you in like a different, a different box. Oh yeah. And my 14 stacks last week, I nailed it. <laughs> so we are coming to the end of the podcast. Unfortunately, I feel like I got, spy- I feel like I'm getting in like full on like event trainer mode now. Cause I can just, I feel it. I'm so I, excited. I feel like I'm getting in deliver baby mode. So it's oh, good that you're- okay. We are two different modes right now. So That's okay, I'll be back. I, I keep telling everybody I'm like by BMS con, which is in November, mm-hmm. I'll be back to my human <laughs> self right now. I'm, I'm operating at like 65%. You deliver a baby. Ooh. I'll deliver an event. I feel like it's, it'll, be great don't I worry have four weeks left you know that four weeks shit four weeks and I'll have a little baby so that's, oh, where, that's where I'm at in life I'm so excited <laughs> so guys thank you for being here today with us for the BMS podcast and if you want to well you can't see us actually we yeah, don't have video on this one but if you want to read the show notes you can always go to bigmoneystylistnow.com and remember send me your crazy insane whatever kind of stories or honestly you can even DM me on Instagram and we will see you guys next